Okay, let's explore some more techniques using brushes with paths, with spirals, all kinds of cool things here. If you looked at my classes before, my videos before, the first thing I did is bring up my rulers and put a guide in the center of my page. The second thing I do is hit the A key to initialize the direct selection tool. Very important technique that no other instructor seems to get a hold of. The A key, the direct selection tool, you'll never see me going up to these tools every 10 seconds. So if I'm in the spiral tool or the brush tool at this point, I could simply hold down the command key or the control key windows to go back to the direct selection tool. It's a very powerful production technique. It's gonna save you a lot of time and headache. The direct selection tool is the most powerful tool to be in. If you want to select group selection tool, it's command option. Windows would be control option is the group selection tool. So as an example, if you had this path and you just wanted to select this part, command key, select. Okay. Now let's say you had a path here. So a path like so. Stroke that. So if you want to select the whole path, rather than do this, just hold down command key, plus the option key to get a part of it, you get the whole path. This way you benefit from both, both, both tools. Command key, command key turns it into a selection tool. The option key keeps it in a group selection tool, which never ever see me select the actual tool. I initialize it one time, therefore, whatever tool I'm in, I hold out the command key to go back to that tool. It's a big technique that will just help you. Okay, so. Let's go make a spiral. And similar to the other class I just did, holding get the arrow key up, arrow key down, makes more or less of a spiral. So there's my spiral. Now, I want to have a spiral that looks like a candy cane, multicolored spiral. So again, two ways we could do this. We could create a path, P for pen tool, create a path. Stroke the path, stroke the path with 10 points, okay? Now let's go to our Shift W. Shift W is the, it's a stretch out, it's this tool over here to the, okay, the width tool, width tool, Shift W. Okay, now I want to turn this into a, a object, object, path, path, outline, stroke. So now, command Y, now it's a path. Sorry, now it's an object. So anything about object, object menu, object path, path, outline, stroke. Okay, now, because it's, it's, a, it's an object, no longer a path, I'm go to the P for pen tool. I'm gonna P for pen, hit the shift X to exchange the stroke for the fill. Notice here I just have a stroke but no fill. Going to do path here. Hold out the command key, hold down the option key to make a clone copy, hold down the shift key to constrain it. Duplicate, object, object, transform, duplicate, command D, transform again, command D, command D, command D. Okay, so now in order to affect, I need to select. I'm gonna select these objects. I'm going to go to Pathfinder. Pathfinder is not up. All palettes under the window menu, window menu, Pathfinder. And I'm going to pick Divide. So now I'm going to hold that Command key, select, select the color. Command key, select, select the color. I'm going to bring the swatches here to make it closer. Select, make it color, select, color. Select, pick a color, select, and pick a color. So now I'm going to take that and make a new brush. Brush palette, brush palette is not up. Window, brushes, new brush. Make a new art brush and hit OK. Now, when I select the spiral, I can have a candy cane spiral. Pretty cool, pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Now at this point, if you wanna make this thinner, go to the scale tool, pick a point to scale from, hold down the option key, and let's scale this at horizontally, 
vertically <laughs> leave that alone. So command D, command and D, command and D, command and D. I can make that thinner. So now I can make that a, that a new brush. So new art brush. We'll just call that thin. So now when I select this, pick that brush, it'll just be thinner. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. Let's take this brush, hold down the option key, make it clone copy. Okay, now I want to have backward spirals. Spirals that go forward, spirals that go backward. So I could go to my reflection tool, pick a point to reflect from, click in the center, and reflect around. Okay, now I want this to be the opposite. I'm just going to put this in place here. So edit, edit colors and invert colors. Now this is the opposite. So now I have two choices. I can select just the inverted color and turn it into a brush, or I'm gonna select both and turn it into a brush. So new art brush. Hit okay, select the spiral. Now I can get spirals going forward and spirals going backwards. And if you put more space between here, so if you could do that same brush again and put a little more space here, say like that, then I can go new brush, new art brush, and hit OK. So now when I select that brush, it just puts more space between the two. So I have a spiral that goes in and a spiral that goes out. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. OK, let's go back to this spiral. This thinner spiral. Now let's say I'm gonna hit the tab key for a second to hide the palettes. Tab key hides, tab key shows, tab key. Now if you just want to leave your tools but hide your secondary palettes in a shift tab, shift tab hides your secondary palettes, shows your palettes. So here's my objective. I just want to make a clone copy of this by holding down the option key, command key, option key. We're gonna to go to edit edit colors. Now notice I have a shortcut for this. This is my own custom shortcut. You can do this under the edit and you edit keyboard shortcuts instead of your own shortcut. But I use this palette quite a bit so I like to use the shortcut keys. Edit, edit colors, recolor artwork. Now watch how cool this is. Command option equal sign. We're going to come here to edit. We're going to lock these colors into place and we're going to basically flip the color. So if I drag this, those colors are starting to go to the next set of colors, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, pretty cool. Now here's the super, super cool part as far as what I just did. When I hit OK and I look at my brushes, I now have a new brush for that effect. So I have the original color plus I now have a new brush color. So if I now hit Command D to duplicate that, Command option equal sign. That's just my personal shortcut. You can make your own shortcut. And I go to here, I lock the colors, and I'm going to basically go in this direction. And hit OK. So again, I have these new brushes to use. Very, very cool. Okay, so now if I create a new object from scratch, as an example, I'm just going to hide everything. Command N3, object. Hide object selection. Command three hides, command option three unhides. Control key for Windows. Control key. Anytime I say the command key, it's control key for Windows. The all key is the option key for Windows. So now if I create a rectangle, fill it with a brush. There's my cool rectangle. Or this brush. Or that brush. Okay, now if I take this one step further, if I go up to my stroke here, then I can stroke this with all kinds of cool stuff here. So if I make this gap, say, I'm going to make the gap 55 pixels. So I get this, and if I turn it into a rounded corner gap, I would get that. So if you go 12, 55, 24, 22, all kinds of clever things. So if you, click, if you select this brush, as opposed to that brush, you're going to get different effects. So if I select this brush, 
that brush effect is different from this brush effect, which is different from that brush effect, which is different from this brush effect. So experiment with stroke gaps. So basically stroke gaps, I can get again by coming up to here, hitting stroke, and applying stroke and gap. And depending on the type of cap you set up for this, you get all kinds of cool stuff. So as an example, if you wanted to do something like this, so here is a e circle. D for default. Let's go to default is the default colors. Okay, letter D. Shift D basically fills it with black. I want to stroke it with black, fill it with X key forward slash none. We're going to make this say 18 pixels. So let's go up here to our property palette and simply make this 18 pixels. Okay, now if I go to stroke and I pick dashed, um, make the first stroke be zero, the second stroke be 20, and the rest of the strokes be nothing. Now, that's not looking all too cool, but if you click here, you now have dots. Okay, now you have basically a string of pearls or whatever you want to create a logo. So I'm just going to make this a little bigger here. So as for scale key, hit the return key, let's make this say 120%. Okay, command D makes it another 120%. So now if I hit shift W, which is my width tool, I can change the width of this and not change the width of that. So how cool is that? So it's basically the width tool, you can make one bigger or smaller than the rest. But wait, we're not done. And if you order before midnight tonight, just kidding. Okay, so let's basically go make this smaller. As for scale, hit the return key. Let's make this say 80%. And now I'm gonna do some very cool effects. Effect, distort, transform, transform. This does dynamic transformation. So we're going to make six copies of this. We're gonna scale each copy 80%. Tab, 80%. So if I hit the preview, you, I get something like this happening. But here's the cool, 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 cool part. If I put my cursor here and hit the up arrow key, I can dynamically affect this as it's moving. And here's another trick. If you hold down the shift key, it goes in bigger increments now because 18, 24, 30, et cetera, et cetera. Hit the tab key, shift key, arrow key down, arrow key up. So I get some very, very, very cool effects by affecting it this way. Arrow key up. This incidentally works for all dialog boxes. So you can make something 10 copies, 20 copies, 30 copies, or go down a copy, down a copy, down a copy. Once you're in the dialog box like this, you can hit the up arrow to make your numbers go bigger, down arrow to make your numbers go smaller. This way you can dynamically see it as it's happening on the screen. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So if you now come to the appearance menu and I'm gonna apply new effects, I'm gonna go, actually, I'm not gonna to go to the appearance menu. Effect, new effect. So I'm gonna apply a whole new effect to this. Okay, so that just duplicated the effect on top of the effect. Now, the new effect that I just applied goes inside the appearance menu. So now I can go to the appearance menu and move that by hitting the preview menu hit the up arrow by holding down the command key, and I can move this into any direction I want. So I get some very, very cool pattern stuff happening here. Okay, now I can also apply a new stroke to this, or a new fill. Looks like it's choking my computer. Okay, so again, these are just cool, cool production techniques. <laughs> Get in the habit of working with strokes, strokes and brushes, brushes with strokes, brushes with gaps, all kinds of clever things we can do with this. So follow me on Twitter, at Adobe Videos. Subscri subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please make comments, comments are good. I know that some of you make comments about my voice. I have a horrible problem with my voice. It's something the doctors can't do anything about. They want to inject my vocal cords with Botox, which I'm totally against. But if you look up Robert Kennedy Jr. voice, 
on Google, it's the same thing he has. If you listen, listen to him speak, it, he sounds just like my voice does. This started happening to me about five years ago. I used to have a perfectly correct voice, but unfortunately, it's not that way anymore. I do the best I can, but uh, just bear with me. It's more of the technique. My voice, I try to make as clear as possible, but you can always watch these videos a couple of times. Now, again, follow me on Twitter at Adobe Videos. If you're in New York City, come take my classes, adobetrainingclasses.com. I teach basically every company in New York City comes to me for training. So adobetrainingclasses.com, been in the same location for since 1996, been in the same neighborhood since 1993, been training since 1987. Talk to you soon. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to my channel and make comments. Comments are important.